Hey guys, this is the second video with your operations functions, and we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do adding. So in this example, let f of x equals 3 times the square root of x, and g of x is negative 10 times the square root of x. So 3x here and 10x here. So find f plus g of x and state the domain, then evaluate the sum when x equals 4. So let's first find this right here, find f plus g of x. Now if you're a visual learner, f plus g of x is the same as f of x plus g of x. I like it this way because my mind makes more sense of it, but either way to notate is fine. So all I'm doing is I'm replacing my f of x, which is 3 times the square root of x here, and I'm adding my g of x, which is my negative 10 times the square root of x. You can skip this step here if you want, or if you want to keep it, that's up to you, but I like to go right from here to here. So then I can see I have the same radicand, the square root of x, so I can combine these terms. So 3 plus negative 10 is negative 7, so I found what um, f plus g of x is. Next it is asking me to find the domain. The domain of the first um, f of x or f of x is all non-negative real numbers. Remember if you have an absolute value of an x it's going to be positive. And then the domain of g is also all non-negative real numbers. So if you adding them together, and you can see this on a graph better, but this one I don't think needed to have a graph. So the domain for both of those together are non-negative real numbers. And you can put that in those words. You don't have to use symbols for that. So to evaluate f plus g of x when x equals negative 4, you can use several methods here are two. The first one is your algebra. With these, it's not hard because we've already deciphered that f plus g of x is negative 7, negative 7x. This is what this equals. But if I'm going to plug in my 4 where my x is, I can then find that the square root of 4 is 2, so negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. That was easy to use algebraically. But if you're going to do it um, graphically, um, I will show you in the next video how to do this graph on using your graphing calculator, which you're going to be able to use on all your tests for math, so you may want to be familiar with this. So, so next video coming up is doing this on your graphing calculator.